Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be tackling a practice problem set that relates to our lecture on cognition, consciousness, and the language. Let's go ahead and get started with problem number one. Problem number one says, which of the following terms describes how existing schematas are modified to incorporate new information? A says assimilation, B says adaptation, C says affirmation, and D says accommodation. Now, when we talked about cognitive development, we said it's the development of one's ability to think and solve problems across the lifespan. And then we focused on Piaget's stages of cognitive development. Before we even talked about the four stages of cognitive development, we talked about how a schema can include a concept, a behavior, or a sequence of events. And as a child proceeds through the stages of cognitive development, new information has to be placed into different schematas. So with that in mind, how do we approach this problem? Well, Piaget hypothesized that new information is processed by adaptation. So we can go down here and see that Piaget theorized, this is from our lectures, that new information is processed via adaptation. And according to him, adaptation to information comes by two complementary processes, assimilation and accommodation. Now this answer choice, adaptation, is too broad of an answer because it does include both assimilation and accommodation. So what we're going to do is, this is too broad of an answer, we're going to mark it out. Now, what is assimilation and what is accommodation? Assimilation is incorporation of new information into existing schematas. If the new information doesn't fit though, then accommodation occurs and accommodation is the modification of existing schematas to account for new information, and that fits exactly into what this problem is asking. So the correct answer here is going to be accommodation, which is answer choice D. One is D. Wonderful, let's move on to problem two. Problem two says, which of the following of Piaget's stages of cognitive development occur before adolescence? One says pre-operational, two says sensory motor, three says formal operational. So the sensory motor, pre-operational, and concrete operational stages, that's stages one, two, and three, all occur prior to adolescence. This last stage, the formal operational stage, that generally coincides with adolescence, just like we talked about in like lecture. So what that means is one is true and two is true, but three is not. So we're looking for an answer choice that says statement one and two are correct, and that is going to be answer choice C. Let's move on to problem number three. Three says a student is volunteering in a hospital with a stroke center. When asked what he believes is the prevalence of stroke among those greater than 65 years old, the student states that it is probably about 40%, even though data analysis indicates that it is significantly lower. What accounts for this error? Is it deductive reasoning, representativeness, heuristic, base rate fallacy, or confirmation bias? So the base rate fallacy occurs when prototypical or stereotypical factors are used for analysis rather than actual data. And because the student is volunteering in a hospital with a stroke center, he sees more patients who have experienced a stroke than would be expected in a hospital without a stroke center. And so this experience obviously changes his perception and it results in base rate fallacy. That makes the correct answer for three, answer choice C. Now, answer choice A, deductive reasoning. This refers to drawing conclusions by integrating different pieces of evidence. Answer choice B, this involves categorization and classification based on how well an individual example fits into categories. And then D, confirmation bias, occurs when a person only seeks information that reinforces his or her opinion. None of those answer choices make sense for this problem. Again, the correct answer for problem three is C. 
Four says, which of the following types of intelligence is not described by Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences? A says fluid intelligence, B says bodily kinesthetic intelligence, C says visual spatial intelligence, and D says linguistic intelligence. So I have the list of the seven defined types of intelligence here based off of Howard Gardner's theory, and the only one that isn't part of this list is going to be fluid intelligence. So four is a fluid intelligence, by the way, consists of problem solving skills. It's not one of Gardner's seven multiple intelligences. Gardner's theory lists, again, linguistics, logical, mathematical, musical, visual, spatial, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, and intrapersonal intelligences. So again, four is a. Let's move on to problem five. Problem five reads, EEG waveforms during REM sleep most resemble which of the following states of consciousness, alertness, slow wave sleep, stage one sleep, or meditation. EEG during REM is composed mainly of beta waves, which are also present during alertness. And so right off the bat, the correct answer here is A. But let's go over the other answer choices. Slow wave sleep, this consists mainly of delta waves, which are not typically present during REM sleep. Stage one sleep consists mainly of theta waves. And meditation, which is the quieting of the mind, it consists mainly of slow alpha and theta waves. So again, the correct answer for five is A. Six says, which of the following indicates the pattern of sleep stages during a complete sleep cycle early in the night? So early in the evening, you're falling asleep. Sleep cycles include deepening of sleep. So you're going to go through stages one, two, three, and four. And then it can be followed either by, you know, getting lighter sleep. So lightening of sleep, you can go four, three, two. All right, or you can go directly into REM, or you can go one, two, three, four, three, two, and then REM. So you can move in any one of these ways early on in the evening. Later in the evening, the cycle may just be shortened because slow wave sleep becomes less common. The answer choice that best aligns with this is gonna be answer choice B. You'll do one, two, three, four, and then your sleep can get lighter. So you might go four, three, two, and then you can go into REM sleep. You can also do go through one, two, three, four, and then REM, but this is not a option here from the answer choices. So we're going with the best possible answer choice that follows a suitable sleep cycle. And that's going to be answer choice B. C and D are easy to eliminate because they're doing four, three, two, you're not going to start with heavy sleeping and then go lighter. You're not going to like put your head on the pillow and bam into stage four, right? You're going to wean into that stage one, two, three, then four. And then you can have lighter sleep and then go into REM. Remember, REM can be interspersed between stages as well. On to seven. Seven says increases in which of the following hormones causes sleepiness. So we have cortisol, growth hormone, melatonin, or oxytocin. So as light diminishes throughout the day, the penile gland, it increases secretion of melatonin, and that results in sleepiness. So the answer for seven is going to be C. What about the other answer choices here? Cortisol re levels, remember, they increase throughout the early morning and they help with wakefulness. Growth hormone secretion, this peaks during slow wave sleep. All right, and then oxytocin, this is associated with uterine contractions and childbirth, milk letdown, and bonding behavior. So it doesn't have anything to do with sleepiness. All right, so the answer for seven is going to be C. Let's move on to problem eight. Problem eight says, which theory of dreaming states that dreams and thoughts during wakeful periods use the same stream of consciousness system? Well, cognitive theorists proposed in the cognitive process theory that wakeful and dreaming states, they use the same mental systems within the brain, particularly stream of consciousness. And so the answer choice that aligns with this problem is going to be answer choice C. But let's still go through the other options. A, activation synthesis theory. This states that dreams are caused by widespread random activation of neural circuitry. B is the problem solving theory. This problem solving theory 
states and indicates that dreams are used to solve problems while sleeping due to untethering of dreams from obstacles that are perceived while being awake. And then answer choice D, neurocognitive theory. This is a theory that is seeking to unify cognitive and biological perspectives by correlating the subjective dream experience with the physiological experiences of dreaming. And so again, a, B, and D do not make any sense. The theory of dreaming that states dreams and thoughts during wakeful periods use the same stream of consciousness system is going to be cognitive process theory, which is answer choice C. Moving on to problem nine. Problem nine says a 19-year-old college student is picked up by campus police after shoplifting a large bag of corn chips and a dozen ice cream sandwiches. His eyes are bloodshot, and during questioning, he repeatedly asks for water because his mouth is dry and he can't stop giggling. What is the psychoactive substance in the drug this student has most likely taken? Okay, let's break this down. The description of the student matches the clinical features of marijuana use, right? There's hunger, there's redness of the eyes, dry mouth, and euphoria. Now, marijuana may also cause increased heart rate, short-term memory loss, paranoia, and in high doses, hallucination. Now, the primary active substance in marijuana is THC, and so that's going to be answer choice D. So nine is D. 10 says, language consists of multiple components. Which of the following involves the order in which words are put together? Is it phonology, semantics, syntax, or pragmatics? So the answer choice here is going to be syntax. Syntax refers to how words are put together to form sentences and create meaning. Answer choice A, phonology, this refers to the actual sounds of language. B, semantics, this refers to the association of meaning with a word. And answer choice D, pragmatics, this refers to changes in usage, wording, and inflection based on context. So again, 10 is C. 11 says, a child speaks in sentences of at least three words, but makes grammatical errors, including misuse of the past tense. How old is this child likely to be? So a child who speaks in three word sentences, but has not yet mastered most of the fundamental rules of language, including past tense, is likely to be between two to three years old. And that's going to be Answer choice C. So between two to three years old, by the way, that translates to 24 to 36 months. And the answer choice that fits in this range is going to be C because 30 months is between 24 to 36 months. Let's move on to problem 12. 12 says, which language theory states that language development occurs due to preferential reinforcement of certain sounds by parents and caregivers? We talked about three theories when we covered language development. We covered the biological theory, learning theory, and social theory. And the theory that aligns with what this question is asking is learning theory. This was based on the work of B.F. Skinner, and he states that parents reinforce sounds that sound like their language, resulting in preferential preservation of those sounds. And that means the correct answer for 12 is going to be B. Going through some of these other answer choices, answer choice A, nativist theory or also biological theory, this posits a critical period during which language acquisition occurs. Answer choice C, which is the social interactionist theory, it indicates that language develops via interaction with parents and caregivers, as well as a desire of the child to communicate. And then answer choice D, which is neurocognitive theory, this is concerned with the subjective experience of dreaming and the physiology of dreaming. So A, C, and D do not make any sense. And again, the answer for 12 is B. 
Problem 13 says, a stroke patient comprehends speech but cannot properly move her mouth to form words. Which of the following brain areas is likely affected? Okay, so let's review different parts of the brain and what they affect in terms of language. Broca's area governs the motor function of language. So a stroke that affects Broca's area is going to leave receptive language intact, but word formation will be affected. This exactly aligns with what this patient is going through. And so the brain area that's likely affected is going to be Broca's area. Now going through these answer choices, a stroke affecting Wernick's area, for example, it will make it so the individual is unable to comprehend speech. A stroke that's affecting this answer choice C is going to result in an inability to repeat words heard, but spontaneous language production is going to be intact. And then for answer choice D, superior temporal gyrus, this is where Wernick's area is located. So again, if this patient comprehends speech but can't properly move her mouth to form words, the area of the brain that's likely affected is Broca's area, making the correct answer for 13, answer choice A. 14 says, a nine-year-old girl is brought to the pediatrician. Her parents describe that any time she is startled, she appears to collapse and fall asleep. She also complains of waking up in the morning unable to move. Which sleep disorder should be suspected? Okay, so the parents and the patient are describing this sudden loss of muscle tone and intrusion of REM sleep during waking hours. This is usually in response to a startling trigger or an emotional trigger. They're also describing that when she wakes up, she can't move. This is exactly what sleep paralysis is, an inability to move despite being awake. And it's usually happening when you're slowly waking up in the morning. These symptoms are highly suggestive of narcolepsy. In fact, this is exactly what happens with this disorder. And that means that the correct answer for 14 is going to be C. 15 says, which of the following stages does dreaming occur? Okay, is it stage 3, stage 4, or REM. Now, we talked about this in lecture. We said that about 75% of dreaming occurs during REM, but dreams occur in all other stages of sleep as well. And so here, the correct answer is statement one, two, and three. It's just asking which stage does dreaming occur? It occurs in all stages. If the question was which stage does most dreaming occur in, then it would be REM. I just want to make that clarification so that you are prepared for any variety of this question. That means that the correct answer for 15 is answer choice D, which says one, two, and three are all correct statements. With that, we've completed the problem set for chapter four. I really hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day, future doctors.